Why are we at a oh, so hmm. I with any luck the Really? Look, and now that Paimon takes a closer These are not real cloud. If we want to go down, we must first Alright, then let's I sense the pre that we've been taken for intruders. This time, why not allow me to take care of this? Unleash! Order guide you. I'm going in! Fallen leaves. Adorn my knights! Nowhere to hide. If the core of the mechanism is exposed, now's our chance. go further down. But before that, let's destroy the guard mechanisms on this level first. Everybody stand! With sword comes shadow. Solidify! Let's light it up! Luckily, 
Luckily, there was a pool of water at the bottom. Otherwise, that could have ended very differently. <laughs> Stabilize! Huh? 
I will have order. Hip, unleash. Manifest. Cryo incarnate. Teamwork is trick. Fallen leads. Adorn my knight. Don't play. Prostrate doesn't float until it's activated. It may look different from most ordinary stones, but it weighs around the same amount. Only after being activated does Plostrite reveal its true nature, breaking free from the shackles of the mortal realm and ascending up into the heavens. Wow, Shenha. You seem to know everything about this. Only because my master is fond of chatting about these things. The moment she has some time to spare, she'll come straight for me and start telling story after story. I don't care for her stories most of the time. I certainly didn't expect them to ever come in handy like this. Hold on a sec! Hyman just realized something. If we activate it here, there's no way we'll be able to get it back to the site, right? Heck, we'll be dragged up into the sky too! But if we don't activate it, how else are we gonna lift it? This rock must weigh well over a thousand pounds, surely! Don't worry. I can handle the weight quite easily. Are you sure? Uh, be careful! Please don't worry. I'm well aware that a Plostrite sample this large must be highly valuable. I will be gentle with it and make sure it does not get damaged. My safety. Sure, you can handle it and everything, but if something this heavy lands on you, you're gonna get yourself hurt, no matter who you are. You gotta be extra careful when lifting heavy objects. It's just common sense. Hmm, is it now? Hmm. Well then, thank you. I'll go on ahead with the plostrite. Let's meet at the building site later. How is Shenha able to? Carry that huge rock all by herself. Oh. Adepti super strength much? We can't slow down yet. Let's go meet her at the building site.
Oh my god, I can't believe my eyes. How can she lift that massive rock all by herself? She's gotta be one of those Adepti, surely. Oh, mighty Adeptus, please give me your blessing, so that in the coming year I may reap a more bountiful salary. This is top tier in size and quality, and the condition it's in is quite simply immaculate. Congratulations, this item is approved for submission. I'm going to award you full marks for the Sunset Vermilionite item. May I take your name? My name isn't important. I'm not even here to compete. I was just delivering this for some other people. They should be here any minute now. Shenhe, and Ningguang's little helper! Ah, so you're the ones behind this. No wonder. The rarest talent turns in the rarest plostrite specimen. But I have to correct you on one point. It's not helper, it's secretary. <laughs> okay then, Miss Secretary, what do you think of the rock we found? Pretty amazing, right? In truth, it is the finest piece of plostrite we have received so far. If everything goes according to plan, we will use this piece in the foundation of the Jade Chamber, which will enable us to proceed to the next stage of construction. As a side note, Lady Ningguang has rented some dwellings in the nearby area to serve as accommodations for the contestants. If you need a place to rest, you are welcome to stay there. Now, please excuse me. As you can see, there is still a lot of work to do on the building site. Shenhua! Shenhua! Just now on the way over, pretty much everyone was singing your praises! Oh, really? What kind of reaction is that? So strange. Aren't you happy about it? Whenever Paimon gets praised, Paimon can't help but hold her head up high and break into a big, smug smile! I've had similar compliments before. They call me an adeptus, treat me with great deference and respect, as if I'm set apart from the common folk. Yeah, cause that's how adepti are. At least the ones we've met are pretty unique and reclusive too. Way different than normal people. But uh, I am not... Uh... Shanna? I'm fine. I've been exerting myself quite a lot ever since we set foot in that abode. Uh, I'm just a little fatigued. Um, well, Byron said that there are some makeshift hotels we can use, right? Let's go check in and take a rest. <sighs> no need. I simply need to find myself a secluded place in the wilderness to sit and meditate in silence. You can't do that. It's dangerous out in the wild on your own. When you're hungry, you go eat something tasty. And when you're tired, you go lie down in a nice, comfy bed. All right? Seriously, don't punish yourself like this. Okay. If you insist. Great! Now we're talking. Let's head to our hotel. <laughs> Hi there! Checking in, are we? You're just in time. We only have two rooms left. Since this was chosen as the building site for the new Jade Chamber, we've had a constant stream of people in this area. And not just workers, either. Visitors, business people, tea sellers, all sorts. So, business is booming for me today. Very few vacancies. You're lucky you got here when you did. Great! One of your rooms is still being cleaned. I, I guess it should be ready within the hour. 
The other room is just at the door on the left. Here are your keys. All right. Hope you enjoy your stay. Please excuse me. I'll leave you to it. Shenha, you should go get some rest. We'll hang around outside until the other room's ready. Paimon's gonna go see if there's anything good to eat around here. <laughs> Paimon couldn't help but notice one of the guests walk in with a huge grilled chicken drumstick before. Let's buy one for Shenhua, too. She can have it as a midnight snack. Or save it for breakfast tomorrow. <sighs> All right. I will head to my room for now. If you need anything, don't hesitate to disturb me. I'm a light sleeper. I will hear if you knock on the door. Mm-hmm. See you tomorrow. Hey! Isn't that Clavert, Tina? What's she doing here? Hmm. Let's go and say hi. Into the wind. One trusts you have met Shen He. So, are you getting along quite well? So far, so good. Yeah. So, you know Shen He too, Cloud Retainer? Naturally. Save for Ganyu, who spends the majority of her time in Liyue Harbor, all the Adepti living today are acquainted with Shen He, to some degree. Cool! So, what's her Adeptus name anyway? Calling her Shen He feels kind of friendly, but also kind of disrespectful. So Paimon's thinking, maybe it'd be better if we called her by her Adeptus name instead! Her Adeptus name? Why, pray tell, would Shen He have an Adeptus name? Uh... Don't all Adepti have a special title they go by? On this latter point, you are correct. However, Shen He is human. Oh! Oh! Right. Wait, what? What? You knew already? So is Paimon the only one who didn't know? Do you mean to say that she presents differently from ordinary human beings? Well, to start with, her problem-solving methods are extremely direct. Ah, yes. She was like this all those years ago when one first met her. In this respect, she has not changed. One first found Shanha by chance in a cave. One was passing by and sensed the presence of a god's remains. Being of an ever-vigilant disposition, one entered immediately to inspect the scene. Inside was Shanha, then aged around six years old, in her hand. She held a dagger with which she was confronting a monster that was the god's remains incarnate. That sounds so dangerous. When one arrived, she had already been locked in confrontation with this monster for several days. Most mortal children are fragile, both physically and mentally, and are highly reliant on their parents for survival. But not so her. That she was able to endure such terrible danger was due not only to her strong willpower, but also to the bloodlust and homicidal instinct with which she was born. One dealt with the monster, yet she still refused to lower her guard. She even pointed her dagger in one's direction and remained ready to strike. Only after she was satisfied that one had no intention to cause her harm, did she finally relent. She then passed out without uttering a single word. In other words, if you hadn't passed by that day, Shenhua might have... 
Not necessarily. Upon one's arrival, one could sense that the gods' wrath was gradually receding. Even had the stalemate continued, one suspects that Shen He may have still emerged the victor of the confrontation. That's still so dangerous, though! Why was a tiny little kid battling against the wrath of a god in the first place? Alas, the mortal world is rife with suffering of every kind. And she had experienced her fair share of this, even at a tender age. Seeing that she was homeless, one decided to adopt her. Indeed, it is one to whom she refers. Xian He has an extraordinary constitution, making her well adapted to practicing the Adepti arts. All the Adepti cherished her talents, and so we were willing to train her. However, her homicidal urges did not subside with age. Rather, they grew stronger day by day. Moon Carver once performed a divination for her. He declared that her fate is to bear the curse of Calamity. Consumed by malevolent energy, she is prone to bring harm to those around her. Such is the magnitude of the danger this poses, that her soul must be bound with red ropes to keep her homicidal instinct at bay. The red ropes have indeed served to keep her calmer and more content. They also seem to have rendered her... somewhat inexpressive. Perhaps the red ropes are so powerful that they have suppressed some of her other emotions as well. It is only by fate that people's paths may cross. Now that Shen He's path has crossed with yours, please be sure to treasure the gift that fate has given you, and take good care of her. gets it. You came out here to check up on Shenhe because you were worried about her, didn't you? Huh. You dare draw such a facile conclusion on the nature of one's present excursion. Incorrect. The truth is that while Liyue Harbor may seem peaceful today, danger is always lurking in the shadows. Ningguang once made a bold assertion that this is to be the era of the contract between Liu Wei and the humans. Well, one is most curious to observe how she will respond to the coming storm. If she handles it admirably, one is willing to be a witness to her achievements. But if she does not, the Adepti shall not hesitate to seize control. Let us conclude our conversation here for today. One has occupied enough of your time, and night is approaching. Be sure to get ample rest. So, Shen He isn't an Adeptus after all! She just grew up around the Adepti. Oh, no wonder she doesn't like being treated as an Adeptus. Having everyone falling over themselves to show their respect all the time must kind of hard to deal with. Master has relayed my situation to you, I take it. Oh? How did you know? I'd intended to wait until you came back before going to sleep, but I didn't hear you come in. I was worried that something may have happened to you. 
so I went outside to check and caught sight of my master. On top of this, you have been acting very strangely around me this morning, causing me to suspect that my master must have told you everything about me. After all, master is... very talkative. <laughs> Sorry, Shenhua. Paimon had you down as an adeptus this whole time, but it turns out Paimon was wrong. It's okay. I don't mind. The fault is mine for not explaining everything to you sooner, because in my experience, trying to explain is a futile pursuit. Still, though you mistook me for an adeptus, you never treated me as distant and unapproachable. Instead, you treated me as you would a friend. For this, I am very grateful indeed. To be fair, we've met our fair share of real adepti, too. Anyway, now it's settled. From now on, you're our friend! Whether you're an adeptus or a human isn't the important thing. First and foremost, we're just plain old friends! Got it. Although I don't know quite what it entails in terms of what I have to do, I must say I like the title, Friend, very much indeed. Great! Well, now that we're all rested up, we should start searching for the other two items on the list. But before we do that, let's go to the building site and ask Ningwang's little helper how the progress is going. After all, Sunset Vermilionite is so rare. Paimon doubts many competitors will really be able to find any. If it turns out some of them have given up already, we'll be able to take things a little more slowly. Oh, and another thing. We bought some grilled chicken drumsticks on the way back last night. There was a place just outside. Here's one for you, Shenhua. Try it! They're so good. I concur. It has a rich flavor, far more agreeable than those I've cooked for myself in the wilderness in the past. Something. That's because it's not finished. Hey, Bywin! And hey, Beto! And hey! Um, person Paimon doesn't know? Given the enormous scale of the Jade Chamber, we split the construction work into two phases to make sure the structure remains balanced. Before we find some suitable plostrite, we build the Jade Chamber's keel at ground level. Once the plostrite is ready, we place it into the keel and let the partially constructed jade chamber rise up to the height of the surrounding mountain peaks. The remainder of the construction work is then carried out at that altitude. Once everything is ready, we release the iron tethers and allow the jade chamber to rise to its target altitude. Miss Bywin, we've brought some new materials to submit. One moment, I'll be right there. The construction work has only been able to progress this rapidly thanks to the plostrite provided by you. Lady Ningguang is most grateful and looks forward to seeing more of your work. Wow, can't believe you sourced the plostrite so quickly. It's the key piece of the puzzle. Looks like you beat us to the punch. Beto, you're joining the Jade Chamber contest too? <laughs> sure am. I happened to get my hands on a chunk of Sunset Vermilionite on a voyage a while back, so I figured I'd bring it over. Huh. So even though it's rare, we're not the only ones who managed to get a hold of it. Oh, I've got some introductions to do. This is the renowned Miss Yun, or Yun Jin, probably the most famous figure in the Liyue opera scene. Greetings. These two are Paimon and the Traveler, both good buddies of mine. And this is, um, 
sorry, I'm not sure we've met. Shenhe. I am there. Mm. Friend. <laughs> Good to meet ya. A friend of a friend is my friend too. Or, as I like to say, a mate of a crewmate is part of the crew. Miss Yun is also here for the contest. Turns out she needed to borrow a boat, so we came together. It's an honor to finally meet you both. I've heard much about you. Miss Shenhe, though we are only meeting for the first time, I have a feeling that we will get along very well indeed. To be honest with you all, I am in great need of this opportunity to ask Lady Ningguang a question. That's why I joined the contest. Thanks to my father's connections, I was able to acquire a specimen of the plostrite required. Fortunately, it was approved for submission, despite being a little on the diminutive side. Wow! So it looks like the three of us are competitors now! Excuse me for prying, Miss Shenhe, but are you competing as well? No, I don't have any questions for Ning Wong. I just wanted to help her win. In that case, I have a proposal to make. Lady Ningguang said that the first three contestants to procure all three materials will be awarded the chance to ask a question. Well, there are three teams here. We can split the prize between us. Instead of competing against each other, we could work together to secure the top three places between us. What do you think? Sounds great, but how does it change things exactly? <laughs> I think I see where you're going with this, Miss Yoon. The plostrite was the most difficult item to source by a long shot. Luckily, all three of us managed to get our hands on it. The two remaining items aren't quite so rare, so as long as one of us finds a way to source it, the other two can hop on the bandwagon. How'd I do? Is that what you had in mind? Precisely. Huh. Interesting approach. Okay then. All right. I'll go first. I have some leads on these wonder cores. From what I've heard, the core itself is really not that difficult to make. The hard part is getting hold of the ore used as raw materials. I'm gonna head back to the ship and ask Su Ling if he's heard of them. You guys... We will head into town and seek advice from Master Zhang of Hanfeng's Ironmongers. Thoughts? Wonderful. We'll split into teams then, and whoever makes progress first brings all of us a step closer to victory. I'm gonna take off. See you later! Okay, let's go! By the way, what question are you gonna ask Ningguang Yunjin? I'm looking for a venue to host the performance of our new opera. Lady Ningguang has excellent judgment, so I would like to hear her opinion. Ooh, what's the opera called? Paima wants to go see it! The opera is a labor of love by my father. He wrote it based on a popular urban legend about an evil spirit and an adeptus. It's called The Divine Damsel of Devastation. <laughs>